Okay, so we're going to go over derivations and predicate logic. Keep in mind, all the rules still apply that you've learned. We're only adding on four new rules. And the rules are only about taking on or taking off quantifiers. So to get started, you need to understand the main connective. Still very important, just like it has been this entire semester. So these up here and this one right here, the main connector is actually the quantifier. So this one, since it has that X with the parentheses on the outside, that is the main connector for this entire line. And you can still do implication inside, and there's an example of how you do that. Here, the main connector is the existential quantifier. Okay, and again, you can still do all of the same stuff. And down here, you'll notice that they're separated. So you have a universal here and an existential one over here. So your main operator on the line one here is the horseshoe. So you have to understand that you're going to be using these differently. So as you go forward, you'll see the four new rules apply for everything governing that entire line. Okay. So these up here, you can take off and then you can put them back on. Not a problem. These down here, these you're going to have to separate off so they're on a line by themselves and then you can take the quantifiers off of them. So like line one, you guys know there's multiple ways to separate a horseshoe, but the main one is modus tollens and modus ponens. So that's how you're going to do those two, or you can do implication and change it into a wedge. And of course, once it's a wedge, then you can use DS, but it's just same rules, just kind of looking at it differently. Okay, so the four new rules are about the universal quantifier and the existential quantifiers. And of course, same as what you learned in the last section, X, Y, and Z, we hold four variables. A through W are our constants, which means it's actually a specific person in the world or dog, cat, whatever it may be. It's a specific, that's why it's called a constant. Okay, so when you put them back on, they will govern the entire line. So this is like what we were just talking about, only going the other direction. So if you're going to have the quantifier be the existential quantifier for line one here, then when you take it off, it's going to take off from the entire section. So you cannot take off quantifiers of the following type of sections. And this is what we were just talking about. So line one, you're going to have to separate those out first. Line two, you're going to have to separate those. And line three, you'd have to separate those as well. So essentially, whenever you have them mixed, so you have universal and universal and your main operator is a horseshoe, just know you're going to have to separate them off. Okay. So let's get ready for the first rule, taking off the universal quantifier. So this is a argument that I used in the notes previous. All philosophers are happy. Emily is a philosopher, so Emily is happy. Now, traditionally, we know this is an accurate and logical argument. We know it's valid because, well, we know modus ponens. However, we can't prove it with the rules we have right now. We need to have a way to get rid of this X and turn it into a constant, and then we can do our proof like we normally do. So this is universal instantation. So this is removing the lead universal quantifier. There's not a lot of rules for this one, but the key is whatever you replace it with has to replace the entire line. So you have an X over here that tells you it's universal. Then you have an X here and an X over there. And this PA is referencing a constant. So we know that's a particular out there. So you can change the X to an A, but they both must be changed. You can change it to a B, both, X, fine. You can change it to a variable that is completely acceptable as well. However, this is what you cannot do. You cannot go and change an A here and then a B there. Whatever this universal is that you're talking about, it all has to stay consistent, okay? And here's just another way of looking at this. So we're removing the X and replacing all the subjects X with any variable or any constant, as long as it's the same throughout the statement. And that makes sense because we're doing a universal. So we're saying all of this is this. 
So we can't have them mixed up. Okay, so here you can do an X, totally acceptable. You're doing a variable. That's a universal. You're keeping it universal. Not a problem. And here we're having a universal statement and we're going down to a constant, which makes sense. Because you have a universal, you're saying all of this in this universe belongs to this. So we can choose one of those out of there and we can create a constant out of that. Okay, so there's no particular restrictions to what subject letter you pick for your UI as long as you change all the X's in that same letter. And of course that could be X, Y, or Z. Okay, next rule, this is place a universal quantifier in front of the whole statement. This is like what we were mentioning earlier. If you're going to do it, you have to do the entire statement and make certain that you're not, make certain that it's going to be the main connector. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot of rules for this one either. So the only restriction is the X must govern the entire line. Oh, and the big one is never with a constant. Okay. So you can go from a universal and then pick one aspect of that universal, pick one particular out of that universal and put a constant on it, but you can't do it the other way around. So the example here is why not? So take the statement and is female. So that's how we would translate it. And if you could universally generalize from FA, then you would be concluding that everything in the universe is female. So you can't go from the universal to the particular. Okay, so now we're getting into the existential. Place an existential quantifier in front of any statement. So change any or all occurrences of the variable over which you are quantifying your quantifier letter. We've got an example here. So from a statement that says X is F or an is F, we conclude therefore that something is F. So there's no particular restriction just as long as the subject letters are all the same throughout the statement. Okay, so taking off the existential quantifier is when it gets a little tricky. So let's just look at this argument. So all New Yorkers are Americans, so we have a universal. Some New Yorkers are bald, and we have a particular. So some Americans are bald, and another particular or existential, okay? so. The key here is when you take off the existential quantifier, you have to put on a constant because we're only talking about one thing within inside the larger area. And we can't have said anything about the constant earlier. So when you do the EI, you have to choose a completely new constant. Okay, so here's an example. So here, you can do the EI from this line one and choose the A. However, when you go and you do it again for line two, you need to choose a completely different constant. Okay, so since we have this restriction on EI but not on the UI, always EI before you UI, okay? You have to do the EI, choose what your constant's gonna be, and then when you do your UI, just choose the same constant, and then you can play with it. Okay, so just written out the rules here. You must change the x to a constant and you cannot leave it as a variable. And the constant a through w pick must be completely new to your proof, okay? So even if one of the premises has a constant in it, you cannot choose that one. It must not exist anywhere in the proof at all. Okay, and then this here are some examples to help you guys understand this better, again, same rules, you guys know that, and this is whenever you have an E, the existential, you're going to do the EI, choosing the B here, B is nowhere in this, could not choose A because of this one right over here, don't want that one just yet, then you can simplify, you guys know how to do that, you can take it and put it back on with the X, and you're going to have to do that in order to get this one over here because the main operator is the horseshoe here. So you're gonna have to separate these out. Then when you get this on a line by itself, then you can choose your A because it's a universal. There's no restrictions there. 
and then you can put it together pretty easily. Okay. Okay. So I hope this helps you guys. There's a lot of examples in the book and I can post more examples as well, just as a handout.